So in your interview, if you are going for a security, cyber security interview, if someone asks you that how you would define cyber security zero trust model in one line, then always tell friends today we'll discuss a mini topic within cyber security. It is not small by any means, but we'll be covering it in a very short time. And that is what is zero trust security in cyber security? What is zero trust security model? So basically security in itself is a very big thing. But in cyber security nowadays, people are focusing on zero trust. What is zero trust? The philosophy of zero trust is never trust always verify so regardless of whether someone because previously what used to happen is if you are within the network two devices are within a private network the trust was uh, implicit okay it was assumed that these two are safe devices to talk to each other but not anymore with uh, we moving on the cloud not anymore now zero trust says that we have to verify and validate each and every one regardless of whether they are within the network or they are outside the network so the core philosophy is never trust always verify the real life example for this is the airport security when you go at the airport to catch a flight at the entrance you will have to show your boarding pass and your ID card to the security personnel then you will go to the check-in counter there you have to show it again to get the boarding pass then you will go to the security check-in there again you will be scanned and eventually even while boarding your boarding pass will be uh, verified okay so all at all the places trust is not assumed trust is not implicit and it is denied implicit trust is denied in zero trust model you have to validate and verify every source all the time. So this is a basic architecture of zero trust. On the left, we have all the sources which are, which could be generating the request. It could be coming from people, devices, uh, apps, and eventually some bad actors as well. But everyone has to go through the zero trust. So everyone has to validate. And based on the authentication and validation, three actions could be taken. Either they will be allowed access or there could be the next level of authentication which is required which is called as multi-factor authentication or eventually the access would be blocked because there is some suspicious thing going on so on the right if the first two are the you know are the outcomes then you will have finally the access uh, of your applications your databases your services everything but it is not permanent Every time you come again and request these resources as per the zero trust model and by the way it is a reference model and everyone could uh, you know implement it based on their principles but there are certain guidelines which you have to follow. So zero trust says implicit trust is always denied. Secondly you have to validate and authenticate all users, all devices, all applications all the time. So all the time you have to keep on validating. The third thing which uh, you know which uh, zero trust advocates is having micro network segments small segments rather than a big segment you should have small network segments because what it does is it reduces the blast radius of the attack so what is a blast radius blast radius is when you plant a bomb or when you throw a bomb at uh, you know how big the area will get impacted by that particular bomb that is the blast radius okay so similarly in a cyber attack an attacker how much of a how much of an area that attacker could impact is called as a blast radius okay so if you have micro segments even if the penetration happens in one segment these two segments will still be secure because these are micro segments so zero trust says that you have to always adhere to this another principle of zero trust is that every access which you give should either be a role based access should be a policy based access or should be a context based access now if you want to know the details of these we can make a different video but just to understand role based access control means that there is already a predefined role and uh, for that particular role there are set of policies so for example you are a cloud admin okay so there would be a policy attached will be which will define what you can do as a cloud admin so if you are assigned this particular role then it is called as role based access control so similarly you have context based and uh, you have policy based uh, access control as well so zero trust architecture works on this simple philosophy there is no rocket science in it but when you go and implement it on your network it becomes really cumbersome because traditionally 
we are not used to zero trust but now it is becoming the de facto de facto standard but still a lot of old enterprises have not been able to achieve zero trust model because the way this has been already defined and designed in their architecture in their landscape but now everyone uh, who is very prone to cyber attacks who are very prone to these kind of uh, uh, security vulnerabilities are opting for zero trust so in your interview if you are going for a security cyber security interview if someone ask you that how you would define cyber security zero trust model in one line then always tell never trust always verify and that is what is zero trust guys let me know if you understood the zero trust model if you want me to make more videos on cyber security then please let me know in the comment what subjects you want me to cover because there is, there is a limit to which what i can cover in a whiteboard so let me know give me your suggestions and i'll try to bring more security networking related videos on this channel so until next time if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friend and family subscribe if you haven't and keep learning keep sharing all your knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now